we've got a giveaway people it has been running for the past two videos and in this video we are going to announce the winners so make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video because you might be the lucky one to get the periodic table and a t-shirt from my clothing line stay tuned yes These beautiful cubes from Engineered Labs represent elements that are used in the nuclear industry today and I'm going to show you how they all fit together like a puzzle to power the reactors that we currently have as well as new ideas to use these elements in upcoming new tech in the nuclear industry. And without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start from the fuel, the heart of the reactor. Currently in the nuclear industry, we use uranium and oxygen, uranium dioxide, and this is the most commonly used fuel nowadays. This fuel is usually not just alone inside the fuel pellet, but we add other elements in order to help control the reaction. These elements are typically erbium and gadolinium, and those are called burnable absorbers. So those are actually added inside the fuel to control the reaction and the number of neutrons that are coming out in order for the fuel to last longer and for us to have a more of a better and safe control of the process altogether. If you want to know more about burnable absorbers or any other concept that I introduce in this video, let me know in the comments down below and I can dig deeper into it and explain more to you about them. Now, to surround the fuel and protect the fuel from the other parts of the reactor, we use zirconium. Zirconium is quite a strong material. It is a material that doesn't easily rust and it's quite robust and used as a protective layer around the fuel, which is called cladding. Another good property of zirconium is that it doesn't absorb neutrons, so neutrons pretty much flow straight through it, which is quite good because we want as many neutrons as possible to be maintained inside the reactor for the chain fission reaction to be sustained. Now, with the so-called Generation 4 reactors, there is quite some interest to explore new types of fuels and fuels that are more efficient than uranium dioxide is. And this is something that I am working with. So I basically don't use oxygen, but use nitrogen instead and create uranium nitride as a fuel that is a much better material to transfer uh, heat through it. And it's much more efficient and long lasting inside the reactor. And it's a very good fuel candidate for new types of generation 4 reactors. Around the fuel and the cladding, we also need materials that are quite resistant to high temperatures and radiation. Some of those materials, like silicon and chromium, are mixed in steels and they are providing a better resistance in terms of temperature and oxidation. But I might have done something and forgotten the main ingredient of steels. Can you write in the comment section down below which element I have forgotten to get from engineered labs to make this combo happen? But uh, nevertheless, as I said, silicon and chromium are quite good in order to make the steel stronger and last better in a harsh environment like a nuclear reactor. Carbon is also quite essential, not only for steels, but also because it acts as a moderator. A moderator basically slows down neutrons inside the reactor, which makes the reaction much more controlled and more efficient since we use uranium-235 to produce energy and this is efficient much better with slow neutrons than fast. Therefore, graphite is used in some reactor concepts for the moderator purpose. And lastly, yttrium in the form of yttrium oxide, yes, the same element from the ITER B mind, is used to strengthen high performance steels that are being developed for next generation reactors. Reactors get really hot, so evidently we need something to carry the heat away. That is a job of a coolant. In a conventional reactor, we use water, so hydrogen and oxygen, and I forgot my hydrogen. I only have an oxygen, but I have water in a uranium cup. So we use water to cool down the whole reactor and to transfer the heat from the fuel to the rest of the reactor components. That's quite efficient, has been used in the nuclear industry since basically the beginning of time. However, there is more concepts. There is helium 
as an inert gas, it's quite good at uh, transferring heat and handling uh, heat, but however, is also problematic for next generation fast neutron reactors. Do you know why? Or if you want to know why, you can let me know in the comment section down below and I can make a whole video about the pros and cons of helium in new reactor types. Both of these materials need to work under pressure in order to be efficient coolants. However, we don't just have these light elements, but we have other things as well to cool reactors. One of those is sodium and another one is lead. Either lead in itself or lead bismuth are two concepts of liquid metals that are quite efficient at uh, transferring heat and cooling down the reactor. They are mostly used for advanced uh, types of nuclear reactors that are not the conventional ones that we use in the nuclear industry nowadays. However, some of them have been built and have been operating either experimentally or actually connected to the grid. The cool thing about both sodium and lead or lead bismuth is that they don't need a pressurized system in order to work as coolants. So that makes a reactor design quite simpler in that aspect. Maybe some of you have noticed that I have not referred to a particular type of advanced reactors and these are molten salt reactors. Nagi. For those we would need a quite a complex chemical combination of materials because their fuel is far from simple and if you are interested I can talk with engineered labs and arrange to have cubes that are relevant to those materials and potentially visit a facility that develops molten salt reactors and dig into it and talk to you all about thorium fuels and molten fuel concepts and everything else. Let's not forget other important roles in a reactor. Boron is used as a material in control roads. It slows down the reaction by absorbing a great amount of neutrons and it can either shut down a nuclear reactor or slow down the energy production when necessary inside of a reactor. Plenty of materials that we already showed in this video appear as fission products when what just happened? uranium is being split. However, some of them, particularly cesium, is one of those radioactive materials that we monitor uh, when there was nuclear accidents like Fukushima and Chernobyl. Both polonium and radium are radioactive materials but are not used in the nuclear industry today. However, they were used initially for nuclear research and when things were being discovered and developed back in the day and they appear in decay chains when uranium decays into other elements. Other elements like holmium, terbium and ytterbium are being studied for use in radiation shielding, sensors and also as control materials in future nuclear reactors. And you see that the Uterby mine had quite the influence in the nuclear industry. From fuel to cladding to control materials, these elements power the nuclear industry now and in the future. A big thank you to the engineered labs for making this video possible and sending me all of these awesome cubes. Don't forget that you can get your own elements and science collectibles at their website and make sure to use my code YFNP for a 10% discount. It's giveaway time! I meant to film this video yesterday, but my period was way too mean to me, so I died at around 8pm in the evening and did not film the video. So here we are, energized with much less pain and ready to give the fantastic presents that we have with collaboration with Engineered Labs to one of you. I have collected some of my favorite comments from you and we're gonna read them together and I'm gonna make the very hard decision of choosing the best one. So the first one is really hard to choose just one element as a favorite Alina. I know how partial you are to uranium. I am, you do know me well. But even you have other elements that tempt you, indeed. For me as an electrical engineer I think perhaps silicon would be high on the list. Interesting, we had silicon in our box as well. Your sample of silicon was highly purified, similar to how it would be purified to make wafers of silicon for integrated circuit chips. Silicon is at the heart of all solid state electronics which drive our world today. 
It's a pretty common element, but just so very critical to our very technical lives. I do indeed agree. I like the whole justification around silicone. It is quite a simple material, but with a very big importance for our everyday life. So very good chances there. Okay, next one. My favorite element is radium because of the fascinating story behind its discovery and initial uses before people knew how dangerous it really was. For example, the radium girls. I have talked about the radium girls incident before in my videos and uh, it is quite an interesting story even though quite dramatic and sad as well and uh, the discovery and the whole history behind Marie Curie and her work around these uh, elements it's uh, quite inspiring so I do really like this comment and I do feel quite close to both elements radium and polonium because of the history that they carry behind them. Okay next one I am an AI engineer interesting so I love technetium the first human-made element it's synthetic rare and quietly powerful just like the best AI models Ooh, someone likes the job next I guess it would be copper for me mmm I like the color I'm living in walking distance from the great Swedish copper mine in Falun interesting copper is a marvelous material that despite its usability ages wonderfully turning green I do indeed like the way it turns green there is a lot of buildings in sweden that uh, use copper on their roofs and they look quite pretty since they are quite aged and they look as if they were painted green but they're not really it's just because of the copper and uh, i like that i like this comment the next person wrote i did a school project on osmium that's an interesting one you don't really hear much about osmium on a whim just because it's metallic light blue color was really cool looking interesting However, after doing the research, I found out that it's the densest element used to find fingerprints in applications where its density is taken advantage of, like in fountain pen nibs at the time. I, I will need to Google all of that, but uh, that's quite interesting. So after the project, it's been my favorite element ever since. That's actually quite cute and inspiring. I always tell people and they were like, what's that? That's, that's quite nice that you actually, you know, it stuck with you since school and, uh, you know, I, I do really like the color and everything, but I don't know much about osmium as an element, besides the fact that the name is Greek. But uh, yeah, that's, that's quite an interesting one. Okay, we are approaching the end. Two more comments left. My favorite element is neon, a noble substance with high integrity. It does not mix with others and glows beautifully in old neon tubes. Indeed. And the last one is, I think mercury is the most interesting one. The only metal which is liquid at room temperature. That is indeed very interesting. I do like mercury as an element. It's quite impressive. And I am the kind of child generation that used mercury thermometers. So I also keep this very close to my heart as a memory so I don't know in what generation you were and if you were using those or immediately went into the electronic thermometers but I had those for quite a while I still have one at home okay and the time has come for me to decide and it's not an easy decision because I did pick basically all of my favorite ones and uh, I'm just scrolling through and trying to decide which one I think is the best we will have some drum rolls and and I think the winner would be Stefan Axelsson 6397 and uh, the element of the choice of Stefan was copper and the justification was the fact that besides it's being useful it turns pretty fully green and I do agree with that it I really like the color and uh, it kind of stuck with me this comment so I think we will give it to Stefan so congratulations for winning the periodic table from the engineered labs as well as a t-shirt from <laughs> as well as a t-shirt a t-shirt design from my clothing line of your choice so i will get in contact with you and uh, i will get your information in order to send you these beautiful presents congratulations once again and thank you to everyone who participated I would love to know what you thought about this video and other collab videos. Let me know in the comment section down below, as well as what other discussions and types of videos you would like me to make. For example, we could dig into the molten salt reactor designs and everything about that. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the bell notification icon. It's been Alina, your friendly nuclear physicist. And until next time, stay curious, stay nuclear. There was a loss of coolant accident. Protective fuel. <laughs>